So when I go to a party and I meet a new person and they ask that inevitable question that people ask, so what do you do? <laughs> and I say, I'm a sexual empowerment coach. I get a lot of different responses, as you can imagine. I get a lot of questions and curiosity because it's natural to be curious about sexuality. And recently, I had a really strange response. This man said to me, oh, so do you do prevention? And I said, I'm not really trying to prevent sexuality. I'm actually trying to encourage its fullest expression. I've been in the field of sexuality for over 20 years. And in those 20 years, I have literally heard thousands of stories about sexuality, very personal stories. And I've come to understand a lot about the things that people struggle with. And I've come to believe, after watching the transformation of so many people, that the more whole we are as sexual beings, the more fulfilled we are as human beings. And that is the idea that gets me out of bed every day. Last year, I was teaching a class. And at the end of the class, a young woman waited for people to mill towards the door so she could have a private moment with me, as people often do. And she came up to me and started telling me about her marriage and how unhappy she was, how unfulfilled and frustrated and sad. Her husband was making her feel guilty about the desires she had. He was picking on her about her body. And she was feeling incredibly inadequate. I have heard hundreds of these stories. She was not a day over 23 years old. She was a young woman. But I have heard those stories from women in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s, even in their 60s. I've heard those stories from men. And I looked at her in that moment, and I said the thing that I have heard myself say probably hundreds of times. You're not broken. And in that moment, her eyes welled up with tears, with perhaps the hope that it could be different for her. And so I had to start asking myself, why do so many women think they're sexually broken? Because they use that word all the time. People will write to me and say, I feel broken, or I want to feel whole, or there's a missing piece. And I know it has to do with my sexuality. And so I think it starts with the way that we teach people about sexuality. We teach young people that sexuality is about losing. You're going to lose something. Or you're going to give it away to somebody. Or someone's going to take it from you. And then we spend the rest of our lives trying to find this thing that we've lost or that we think we've lost. And the other thing that we do is we teach young people that sexuality is about somebody else. We don't teach them that it's about them. And the other thing that we do is we teach people shame. We all have a story of sexual shame. I can remember that moment very, very clearly for myself. And I bet you everyone in this room has a story about shame. When I was, this is me, about nine years old. And at that age, I had made this really amazing discovery about my sexuality. I had discovered that <laughs> that my genitals smelled different from the rest of my body. I was really fascinated by that. I thought that was really interesting. And it was something that uh, I would engage in. I would, I would touch my 
my genitals through my clothes. I wasn't even masturbating, and if I was, that would have been normal. But I would touch myself, and then I would bring that scent of my own sex to my nose. And I thought that this was a really important discovery. And that's a normal discovery for a child. And so one day I was following my mother outside in a public place, and I did my little ritual. I probably wasn't even thinking about it, and she whipped around. Stop touching yourself and smelling yourself. Wow. I didn't know this was that bad. So everyone in here has that story of sexual shame, whether you got caught doing something you weren't supposed to do, maybe it was about your body, maybe it was about the way that you love, or the way that you have sex, or the way that you express yourself. But we've all been shamed in some way. And that shame shows up in so many different ways. Um, The parent that sucks their teeth when a sex scene comes on the television, the way that we have all this strife in the house over teen dating and teen sexuality, and the way that girls are getting shamed about their sexuality, we call it now slut shaming, they're killing themselves because of it. Or the way that boys and girls who are gay get harassed. There's so many ways that we take in those messages about shame. And then that turns into, sex must be really bad. Or more deeply, I must be really bad. So what does shame look like? I teach a women's sexually empowered life eight-month program. And it is a way for women to really explore their sexuality in a very meaningful way. And These were some pictures that I asked the women to write recently um, to draw a picture of what shame looked like. Um, This one you can see, she uses the word broken. This one is similar. They had colored markers available, but it's a very dark place for most people. And then this one, that's how I felt that day. So I have a question for people in the room. How many of you actually had sex education that prepared you for a healthy life as a sexual teen? Let me see hands. Uh, Hold them up high, come on. Aren't there some hands, what, two? Are there really only two in this whole room? Three, four, five? Okay, wait, those five of you, keep your hands up. How many of you actually had enough sex education to prepare you for adulthood, for an adult sexual life? Uh, Two are left up. Okay, so two in this whole room. That's pretty good. (laughs) Not so much. Um, So what if, what if (laughs) instead of teaching young people that they're going to lose their virginity, that we started teaching them that they were going to gain something that they were gonna claim their own sexual being and body, that they were gonna claim their own desire, that they were gonna claim, yes, their pleasure. They were gonna claim their own sexual choice. We wouldn't grow into adults who think we're broken. And what if we didn't teach them that it's about somebody else, but we taught them it was about them? We wouldn't grow into adults who don't know what they want sexually, who don't know how to ask for it, because sexuality has always been about everybody else. People often ask me um, when they hear that I'm a sex educator, they say, oh, so do you work with teenagers? Because the the implication is that teenagers are the only ones who need sex education, but adults need sex education too. If we didn't learn it somewhere, then how are we going to have the fulfilling sexual lives that we really want to have? So the more comfortable and good you feel in your body, whatever its size, shape, 
color or imperfections, the more whole you feel. The more confidence you develop, the more whole you feel. The more sexually expressed you are, the more whole you feel. So there's three things I want you to do when you leave here. Number one, stop telling yourself how broken and unfixable you are because you're not. You just didn't get the education that you need. You just didn't get the resources that you need. Imagine how much energy you'll get back when you stop chasing missing pieces and telling yourself you're broken. Number two, stop teaching young people that sexuality is about losing. Teach them instead that it is about discovery and curiosity and developing who they are and creativity and pleasure. And number three, get rid of this idea that sexuality is not important because it is. And people tell themselves that all the time so that they can push it to the side and not deal with their real feelings about it. If it wasn't important, we wouldn't have so much shame about it, we wouldn't have so many rules about it, and we sure wouldn't have so many taboos about it. It is important. The more whole we are as sexual beings, the more fulfilled we are as human beings. It is a radical idea, and it goes against the grain. But a world where people are guided by their own internal desire, where they love their bodies, where they respect their own sexuality and express themselves from that internal core, that's the world that I want to live in. And I hope you do too. Thank you.